good morning for about 10 more minutes. <laughs> And welcome back to the Knit Mix podcast. I'm Carla and your host. You can find me on Ravelry as knit hyphen nix. That's K-N-I-T hyphen N-I-X on Rav. And then you can also find me on Instagram as Carla G. It's been over a month since my last podcast. I podcast about Mm -hmm. July 18th, I think, and that was episode 13. So here it is, August 23rd, and this is episode 14. Can't believe it, but yes, it is. Um, it's been over a month since I podcast, so lots has happened and lots of new things to share. So I will get right to it. If you're a new viewer, thank you for coming. And if you're coming back, thanks for dropping by again. Um, I've been on a, a month-long adventure into the interior of BC and then out to Vancouver Island with my husband. He took the entire month, well, not quite, I guess he took about uh, 23 or 24 days off of work. And we loaded up our Volkswagen Eurovan and went on an adventure. We <laughs> started in um, Calgary, of course, but then we headed west and we meandered through the interior of British Columbia and made our way to Vancouver Island where we uh, stayed in lots of different places and saw lots of really cool things. Um, the One of my favorite things that we did was go canoeing on uh, the coast of uh, Parksville, a friend of mine from Calgary, who I used to teach with, has moved out there and her and her husband have this lovely place in Parksville and my husband and I um, went kayaking and I will share a, a picture of that or a couple pictures of that right here. And so, um, yeah, as you can see, it was the sunset was beautiful, and the colors in that were just spectacular. Um, the pictures didn't do it justice, but the um, I would say the sky was um, mandarin orange, periwinkle, and gray. So, I think that would be a cool combination for a shawl. Anyway, let's start. Let's jump right in here. On our adventure, or actually before our adventure, I went to visit my friend um, Leslie from YYC Knits. She's currently doing a um, farmer's market here in Calgary at the Bridgeland Farmer's Market. And that runs every Thursday. And uh, before I went, I went down and visited her and I took some film there. So I'm gonna put that footage in here before we get started because I'm sorry, Leslie, it's been a, almost, well, it's been a month since I was down there visiting you and I wanna get that up and add that right here so that you can see what uh, she's doing down there. She's got a lot of great things. So here we are at the Bridgeland Farmer's Market. It's Thursday, uh, July 21st and it's a gorgeous, hot summer day in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. And I'm here with Leslie of YYC Knits, and I'm just scoping out her little booth here. She has got a great little display on here, and she sells all kinds of yarns. She's got some kits made up. She's got some dye-your-own yarn kits, as well as some sock kits. And she's got all kinds of other things, such as um, a whole complete package so that you can make the... Um, Spice Market? Is that what it's called, on Leslie? The spice on the Spice shawl, Market yeah. shawl. She, I, I, actually, I think we're pointing right at it. Yes. There's the pattern right there, and she's got these kits made up so that you can, in fact, uh, create your own on the Spice Market shawl by Melanie Berg. And I'm just going to pan it around here, and I'm there's Leslie, <laughs> and she is making a sock. She does not have second sock syndrome. She, in fact, is on her second sock. Of which pattern is this? I am. Um, this is the faux cable. Okay. Sock. Cool. All right. Yeah. 
And yeah. you got this pattern out of the library, you said? I did, yeah. Good. I downloaded the book from the library. Hello! All the kids are here. There you go. Yep. It's great. Actually, pan to the back. This is what... Uh, this is what it's like. And yeah. can you see the Calgary Tower? Are you Let like me see. Oh, yeah. Cool. Very you know cool. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Yes. Yeah. So you come down yeah. here every Thursday and you awesome. get your booth set up and you bring your kids with you. Yes, you do. How oh, cool is yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Lots of other people at this uh, farmer's market. There's all kinds of vegetables and fruits. And so I'm inside the YYC Knits booth and I am just going to gonna pan around and give you a tour and and Leslie's gonna commentate for me yeah so these are some of our designs that can be found on Ravelry uh, the death by chocolate uh, cows that's this one yeah okay so there's a mother and daughter cow one is a child and one is an adult and that's the adult and the, okay and then the child's pattern yeah and those are made out of Malabrigo rust and then we've got our busy bee hat that's a free oh, okay. uh, Ravelry download cool. uh, I bought this one for my sister for uh, her yes, birthday that's Blue Except Bruce. I got a pump. Yes, I know. We had to steal that one. That's it's beautiful. Just awesome. And then we've got our stripes hat. So that's our stripes pattern that um, has the beautiful brioche uh, ribbing. Cool. And then this little guy is just Aww. one of my faves. It's actually not my that. design, but that's the meathead hat, and it's super cute. And it comes. Oh, and you. But it's, Aww, um, this is pocket. made out of our North Glenmore Park uh, organic merino, 100% organic merino. Gorgeous. So it's just gorgeous. Okay, and what are these? Parts. Look at, you've got so little yeah, minis. So we've got minis. Cool, and mini what's this? Skins. Is it? Just mini ski, uh, mini cakes. Okay. We just wound them up. They're a little bit more yardage. Oh, beautiful. There. Look at the color on that. That's splendid. And this lovely little so yellow thing? That's just fun. It was dyed with turmeric, so natural okay. dyes. Oh, cool. Yeah. And so down below, we've got our sock yarns. And okay. we've got. Oh, down here. Evan. Skip down. So we've got our sock yarns. Uh, Merino cashmere nylon. And it, what's this little kit? Um, so that little kit is our um, three sets of uh, nine inch cirques. Okay. Oh, um, yay! I've got a convert. I know. And so we've got uh, the little, just little sheep um, needle sizer. Right. And then a beautiful oh, project bag cool. right from Haya Haya. So oh, nice. these are $75. And when you purchase one of these sock knitting kits, right. um, you get 10% off a sock yarn. Oh, Okay, cool. So our sock yarns are $32. Okay, that's great. And that, look at this, dye your own kit. So it comes with some merino here. Huh? Yeah, so there's actually 1,600 yards in there. Holy cow. Superwash merino, DK weight yarn. It's Beautiful. absolutely splendid. And then you have the dyes over here. Yeah, and that's the stuff that we used in season uh, sorry, in episode, 10. episode 9, I was believe it, nine? it was. Okay, yeah, 9. Of your podcast. Okay. So you can see Yeah, so those for those of you who are returning uh, viewers, this is the gal that I dyed that yarn with in episode 9, apparently. Yeah. And did you know that that's my uh, episode with the most views? Yes, I do. I, I was checking it all out. Keep, it was so I know, awesome. I keep up on it. There so we go. So we fun. should obviously do more podcasts oh together. Oh my gosh, I know. Yes. Like, <gasps> and look at these. These are snagless stitch markers, aren't they? Yes, they are. Beautiful. Me. Cool. And are they uh, stone? Uh, yes, they are. Beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And here, is this some hat kits? So those are uh, Joji Locatelli oh, wow. uh, kits for oh, her. Oh, oh, he. Sorry. Oh, he. I, I knew know. that. Everybody says that. I know. And but so like, if this you were is for her it, three yeah. color cowl. So okay. I've just made up some kits for that. Very cool. And I love it. I love oh. her. She's one of my faves. I know. I can follow her on so, Instagram. Too. I know. She's amazing. Awesome. Yeah, so these Beautiful. are just some little kits that I made up for that. Cool. Anything else? Oh, what's and this? It's just just something on. That's just our big decoration. balls. Yeah, we've got some uh, <laughs> some big balls. Awesome. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> and then uh, yeah, just more of the same. We've got some needle sets um, as well. Cool. And then here's your little pom poms. Cool. And sparkle and some more hat kits down here. Oh, okay, so. there's the hat kit. I bought one of those for my sister. They're dwindling. Our stock is so low. We've just been so busy. That's so awesome, though. We're going to have That's to dye great. some more yarn. Beautiful. Yeah. And what's this in the corner here? Oh, uh, is another more of your kits? Our needle kits, yeah. Okay, cool. Beautiful. So the highest sets are $108 plus okay. GST. Is that a complete set They're then? Amazing. Yeah. Um, okay. So we've got the chunky sets and okay. as well as the... And here are just more. some more little... Oh, this is the other one that we talked about. 
This yes. one. Yes. On the spice market. Beautiful. I'm in my own. I'm my, I'm my own worst enemy here. There we go. Beautiful. And all the kits that you have. What does the kit cost for this? Okay. On the website. Okay. Also, oh, it's cheaper if you come down to the if you come the down to the market, market and you get a bit of a break. Yeah, awesome. you do. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks, Leslie. We'll Thank you. Well, right. thanks for coming. All right. Bye now. <laughs> Bye. And you can see from that piece of footage that she's doing really well down there. She's got some really great um, yarn that she dyes herself, and from that I bought. Um, my Haya Haya 9 inch circulars. I've been kind of using the Clover 9 inch circs, but I've decided to try the, the metal. Um, I love them. I Two things I don't love about them is how they don't angle like the Clovers do. The Clovers have a little bit of angle, which makes them a little easier to manipulate, but I do love the speed of the metal. And what I do, I guess I, I don't realize I do this, but I when I'm knitting, Quite often I will use my index finger on my right hand to kind of push things along and they're really sharp so I ended up having a little bit of a, 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 a knitting injury I guess. <laughs> anyway so but I love them I've got them on um, some of my knitting so let's move right into um, I'm going to first say I don't have any finished objects can you believe it I had a whole month of knitting and I don't have any finished objects so let's skip right past that. I've got lots of things on the needles I kind of became a, a, a non-monogamous knitter and I've cast on all the things. So um, let's start with some of the, the socks that I'm knitting. The first one up would be my uh, I cast on with my new um, Haya Haya 9 inch circulars and I cast on Susan B. Anderson's new pattern that she's got. She's got a, a summer knit along as well and I'll add that to the bottom. Um, She's got a great pattern. It's a top-down afterthought heel pattern, and it's called the Smooth Operator. And I'm just gonna share with you what I've done so far. So I'm using Opal Sock Yarn. Um, here it is. And it's lovely, I can't, it's all in German. If you can read German, good on ya. But yeah, here's the colorway right here. So yes, it's lovely yarn. And I love the colors. And the reason I'm making these um, is because these ones are for me because um, I'm a I have blendstones and they are black and red. And I thought I would like to have some socks to wear with them. And so I chose this uh, yarn for that and as you can see it's a great colorway it's beautiful it's pinks and blues and reds and kind of an aqua color and I've just moved past the afterthought heel now I did something kind of stupid I added the afterthought heel using a yarn if you can see it right here that's not really that contrasting but anyway I've just moved past the afterthought heel right here and I'm carrying on it's a really cool pattern I guess you knit until you get about three inches into your foot and where you you put your heel in where you want your heel and then after you're up, up here you'll go back and you will knit the afterthought heel so it's a really cool pattern and I'm and loving it but I didn't spend a ton of time knitting on it because I moved on to other things. Oh, and here's my Haya Haya Sharps from, I don't know if they're Sharps, but they're Haya Haya 9 inch Cirques. Well, they are sharp because I have a, an injury, but these are the ones that I got from Leslie uh, with While I See Knits. She's selling them at that uh, market that I shared earlier. So that's coming along. I'm still on the first sock there. Oh, and here's the needles that I'll just show you that what they look like here. They're reasonably priced too. I can't even remember what I paid, but I thought, oh my goodness, there they are. They're the Haya Haya, and I'm using a 2.25. And yeah, they're lovely. I bought two pairs, and I've got one pair on those, and I think, where's the second pair? It might be on my next ones. Actually not. Hmm. Oh, I see it. Yes, I'll bring that one up next. But right now, I wanna talk about something that I'm really I'm working on that I'm really thrilled about. Um, I've created my own pattern for socks, and I'm, was playing with a stitch called a um, it's called the lattice stitch 
and it's also called the, hmm, it's got two names. I'll put the names, the two names of them down here. Anyway, I was making a pair of socks starting using that stitch. And uh, then I started reading about people who use the stitch all the way through and they said that it doesn't pr uh, provide enough give. And so I thought, oh, maybe I'll switch to a different stitch. And as I was switching, I'm looking at it and I'm and looking at my yarn and I'm thinking, oh my goodness, this looks like scales on a fish. And then I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I created a pattern um, using that stitch and another stitch? So I've created this pattern and I don't know if you can see, there's the lattice stitch up on top. And I love the color. The color is a koi goo and um, it is 100% merino, which I was a little worried about. But the lady at the store that I bought it from said, oh gosh, no. Actually, no, I didn't buy it there. I, was, I saw it in a, a store. I'll tell you more about where I got my yarn. But I saw the same, similar koigu at a store and I said, gee, I was hoping to knit socks with it. And she says, oh, don't worry about it. Because it's got such a tight uh, wind on it, I'm not a spinner, but um, because it's quite tightly wound, it wears very well, so don't even worry about it. She says, if you really wanted to, you could add some of that thread on the heels and toes and the places of wear, but she says she doesn't even do it, and she says they wear just as well as her other socks. So I thought, oh well, I don't wear my socks just on their own. I usually wear them in shoes or in boots or whatever, so I thought I would carry on. But anyway, the top is the lattice stitch, and then I move on. And doesn't that stitch there, that little lace pattern, kind of remind you of Mermaid's Tail? So the name uh, that I'm creating for this sock is called If Mermaids Wore Socks. And I think if mermaids wore socks, they would wear this sock. And so I added this patterning onto the whole thing. And I'm going to insert a picture here. Um, of my sister-in-law modeling my socks when we were in Quadra Island on our trip. So I'll insert that right here. So there, yeah, so you can see it's a really nice little uh, sock and it knits up lo lovely and I'm on my, I haven't got second sock syndrome. I'm on uh, my second sock and I'm here on it. So I haven't got second sock syndrome. I've done, I've turned the corner, turned the heel, and I'm carrying on and I'm just doing the actual lace in the front here, if you can see it. And I'm using, for these socks, I'm using my standard uh, Clover um, nine inch circulars. And I'll show you, I'm talking about the bend. This is what I like about them. They have kind of more of a natural bend in them than the Haya Haya's. And the t points are not as sharp, so I don't give myself injuries. But I also, too, they don't slide as nicely as the metal. So both uh, needles have their advantage. But yes, I'm going to actually write this one up, and I'm going to actually write it up for 9-inch circs, but I'm sure anybody who knits with DPNs or Magic Loop will be able to follow it. But yeah, that's my kind of my one of my adventures. So that's a, what I've been working on during my holiday during this past month. And let's see here, oh yes, and then I went um, on and I did some yarn shopping, but I'll mention more about that in my uh, fix portion of my uh, episode. But uh, what's on the sticks is one of my purchases. I have a little, I noticed that I divided the Koi Goo yarn evenly into two um, nice cakes. And after I finished my one sock, I noticed I had a little bit left over. So I thought, gosh, it's a shame to let that lovely aqua color go to waste. So I went and shopped for a um, yarn to make um, heels, toes, and um, tops with it. I'm not sure if I'll get all of that. I'll see how much I have left over. But I used that same aqua marine color on this vanilla sock. And I bought this yarn and isn't it lovely? And I'll talk about a little bit more about that in my acquisitions, but that's on the needles. And that's on my other, the second pair that I bought from Leslie, my other um, Haya Haya's that I showed you. And the yarn that I'm using is something I've never used before. And it's called On 
on live, O N live. Anyway, I'll do more a little bit more about that, about where I got that in acquisitions. And is that it for socks? One, two. I do believe that is it for socks. I have three pairs of socks on the needles. I have got my shawl on the needles, which I haven't touched, didn't take with me on my trip. And I also have my Drakenfell, which I didn't do anything on while I was away. And I think, oh, and I did start a sweater. I got, I put on my big girl panties. <laughs> Because I'm the only sweaters I've knit. Well, actually, you know, when I think about it, I knit one sweater back in university. And I don't know what, you know, I, I think I was in my last year of university, and I that's when I taught my sister in law to knit. And we used a, a wool called Penguin. And it was a lovely sweater. It was really soft and fluffy, but it was itchy. And for some reason, I got a one ball of yarn that was kind of thicker than the rest. So I always had like this thicker part on the sleeve, kind of a bit of a disaster, but it was lovely. But I don't th even think they make that yarn anymore. But so that I did, I have, in fact, knit a sweater many, many, many years ago. And then I quit knitting for years and years and years. And then now, and then I started crocheting. And now that I'm back to knitting, um, the only sweaters I've knit is I knit a small sweater for my grandson. And then I just knit another sweater this summer in Palm Springs, which I shared on my last episode. And now I am going to try, I'm not sure I will finish or complete it, but I'm knitting the um, a sweater for Knit City. So we'll see how far I get. I just started it yesterday. And I used the yarn that I purchased uh, that I showed you on my last episode from Knit Picks. They had a really great sale. And it's a copper color yarn. And it's called uh, Swish. It's the Knit Picks Worsted. And this colorway is called Copper. Focusing in, yeah. And I just started it. And here is, oh, the sweater is called the Leela Sweater, Leela Pullover. And it's in Worsted. And it's by Carrie Bostic Hoag. And I'll just write that information on the bottom there. And I'll insert a picture here. Anyway, the only thing I've done so far is I've just started the bottom. The bottom is in garter stitch. And when you're doing garter stitch in the round, I didn't realize this. Of course it makes sense because garter stitch is knitting, knitting, knitting if you're going left and right and left and right. But when you're working in the round, garter stitch is a whole round of, of knitting and then a whole round of purl. So I didn't realize that. So um, that's kind of interesting. I didn't notice that. And then I, when I've done two and a quarter inches, I'm going to start on doing stockinette. But what I like about this pot pattern, as you've seen in the um, picture that I presented earlier, it has a bit of um, short rows on the back so that the back swoops down. So I'm going to be doing short rows too. And I've done short rows on heel on a sock before, but I've never incorporated any short rows into a sweater. So that's going to be interesting and kind of fun to do. So I've done a little bit, but if it's anything like my Drakenfell's shawl, or shawl it'll probably take me a long time. But I've got too many things on the needles and I've got to stop and not cast anything more on except one more thing, and I'll talk about that in upcoming events as well. But I have to finish up some of the things I have on my needles. No more socks. No more socks. Anyway, so that is all of my uh, works in progress or what's on the needles. I have no what's off the needles, and I have lots of acquisitions. So I'm going to go on and talk about that. Hi, this is Carla from the future. I'm going to put this little segment in here because I forgot to mention uh, another podcaster. That was a long time ago. Another mm -hmm. podcaster that I met in Kelowna, British Columbia. She is a teacher. She's a knitter and a spinner. And her name is Carla. So uh, Carla with a K. On Instagram, you find her as uh, Carla Crafts, I think. 
I'll put the name down here. But I know that she has a blog and she does an audio podcast called Relentless Knitting. And I'll put all that information down here. She was in Kelowna when we went by and she let us use her yard to put together our, um, uh, we bought a thing to put Tucker on the bike. It was called a buddy rider and it's a way that we can uh, carry Tucker on the bike. And I'm gonna insert that little video of him um, on the bike for his maiden voyage. Anyway, sorry Carla that I forgot you, but I am, I'm inserting you in the middle here. Here he comes. Here comes Tucker and Tim. <gasps> That's hilarious. Yay, Tucker! That looks like fun. <laughs> he needs a helmet <laughs> and goggles. In my adventures this summer a lovely lady and I'll put her name on here her Instagram name and she's got a name on Ravelry and I'll put it down here here I know her as Lisa and Lisa uh, watches my podcast hi Lisa and she asked if um, or actually I offered I told her that I absolutely love one of her shawls and I will insert the picture and the name here Anyway, um, it, I think the translation is about, it's like foggy, it's something about fog. Anyway, the, I love the colors she chose, and I'm thinking I would love to make it, and I absolutely loved hers, but I would like to do it in a different, uh, she did hers in cotton, I believe. So she sent me the pattern, and she wants me, and I told her that I offered to translate it into English. She did translate it already, but she wanted me as teacher. <laughs> and English speaking person to edit it for her. So I have to do that. I just got home, Lisa. I will do that. That's up next up on on the docket after my podcast here that I will give that back to you. But I was going to do it in a merino. And she said, uh, the lady at the store said a DK would be nice, but I chose three yarns. And um, I'm going to show those in my acquisitions as well. But um, I'm having a tough time with the colors. And I'll show you the three that I selected and I'm not sure. I mean, I've seen this color this color combination a lot. So I'm not sure whether I'm gonna do this, which are the green and the purple and the gray, or whether I'm gonna do something else. That was just one selection. So I grabbed it because of course I'll use it even if I don't do the shawl in it. But I'm also thinking, earlier I talked about that sky that I saw in um, on Parksville. And I talked about mandarin and periwinkle and a light gray or a gray or another one other color. I think that would be a cool combination too. So I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing yet, but that has to go on my needles as well soon because I promised her that I would start that and show you my progress on my um, podcast. But hi, Lisa again, and I will get onto that soon, I promise. So let's move on to the fix. And I will go chronologically through the things that I've acquired over the summer since my last podcast. Um, I bought another bundle of that Opal Sock yarn on Etsy through um, through the one of the shops there. So that has is coming, but I ordered that a long, uh, no, actually it came, and I ordered that quite a long time ago, and it took quite a while to get here, but it came. So I've got a bunch of opal sock yarn. And then, of course, it's in the middle of the night and I can't sleep because I've got hot flashes going on. <laughs> I go back on to her Etsy shop and I, she put some more back on. So I ordered another. So I'm going to have like 20 balls of opal sock yarn or more than 20, probably 25 I'll have in my stash. So I have a lot of sock knitting to do and i got to go on a bit of a yarn diet because I can't afford to have 25 balls of opal, opal sock yarn just sitting there and not be knitting them. So I can't buy any more until I get knit that up. So I did that, but um, I, I bought those lovely Haya Haya needles from Leslie in early July. And then I left on my trip and I went to 
um, in Vancouver Island. I've tried to find some yarn shops along the way, but they were either closed or we were just buzzing through the town. So the only time I, I only went to two yarn shops for in a whole month, which is, I thought, pretty good. And I went to one on Vancouver Island in Campbell River. And the name of this shop is called the Needle and Art Center. And that is where I bought the yarn for my um, shawl that I was, well, one of the options. I bought this kind of yarn, it is Cascade. And there's the tag, and it's lovely and squishy. And I bought two gray and a green and a purple. So I might do it in that. I'm not sure, It'll it's lovely and it, it'll become something whether it becomes that shawl or not. But I bought that there. And then I, of course, I had to buy one another ball of sock yarn. This one, this is a Barocco. I bought this at that little, lovely little shop. And it's lovely. I've never knit with it, but it seems nice. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm really into the turquoise these days. So I love the purple and the turquoise. And then I also bought a mug from there. And that's what's my, co my coffee's in it. Isn't it lovely? So I have a thing for uh, potters and, and pottery mugs, etc. So this is my coffee. And it's a pretty mug. And the here is the uh, owner's. Here's the, the information about where I bought that yarn and where I bought this mug. And that's her husband. The lady was a German lady. And when I showed her the pattern in German, <laughs> I didn't leave it for her. Don't worry, Lisa. But she was really excited about it. And she asked me where she could get it. So I gave her the information on how to get it. But my mug is from this potter. And so yeah, there were some really lovely mugs in her shop. And the one I really, uh, one I, another one that I fell in love with was gorgeous it had a maple leaf on it was beautiful and then i looked and it was made in pei and i'm thinking like i'm on the other side of our country why would i buy a mug from pei so um anyway this is the potter and she's lovely and her work is lovely too so this is the potter where i bought this mug so anyway so that's that and that was that first shop and then we moved on down the way and I, um, we went to Comox. We, we, we were in Quadra for a while and that was lovely. Did a lot of really great hiking there. And my brother and his wife, um, have a place rented there in a salmon fishing boat. And we did a boat ride, got a little seasick, <laughs> caught, um, we did catch one cod, cod, yeah, cod, yes, cod. <laughs> I thought it was a herring, but we caught a cod cod but it was too small so we threw it back into the ocean so it could grow up a little bit so yeah no um that was fun did lots of hiking and our dog is a great little hiker and we went on some adventures and there's cougars on the island but I uh, didn't see any cougars I'm sure they saw me but I didn't see them um and then we were there for four days and then we left back to Vancouver Island and then on I, that's where I went to Campbell River. That's where the ferry stopped. So I bought that first bit there. And then we carried on down the road and we went to Parksville or Comox. That was meant the next one. And in Comox is where I bought this yarn and to make these socks. And that was a lovely little yarn shop. And the name of that shop was called the Village Yarn Shop in Comox and I didn't even go looking for it. We went looking for a place to park in downtown Comox and we pull into this um, empty spot and I look up and it said yarn shop and I looked at my husband and said um hello <laughs> I'm definitely gonna have to go in there and that's where I went in and bought this and I brought my uh, mermaid socks in and I said you know I'm gonna have a little left over and she helped me match up. Isn't that a pretty cute pretty good match? I love it. Take a look. And here's the yarn up close. It is called, there it is, and the, here's the number, I guess. Anyway, it's lovely. It knits up gorgeously. And you know what? Take a look at this. I haven't seen it really, truly, properly repeat yet because the colors are, I mean, I thought this was a repeat and it's doing it there, but this and this are not at all the same as far as length and size. So. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking that's the full repeat right here, from here to there, but it's a different repeat in the color. See, this color doesn't quite match this color, so I'm not sure if it's 
really is the repeat, but we'll find out. Actually, no, because look, look what color's coming up next. It's the yellow, and it should be the gray, right? I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't seem to match, but whatever. I'm enjoying it, and it's very colorful, and they're all my colors. So, yeah. That is from my other yarn shop that I went to in Comox. And then um, we meandered through back through Vancouver, did a lot of visiting. And while we were away, and we were on in Mill Bay, which is where we stayed for a bit, um, you know, our friends uh, whose daughter was very sick with the cancer, she passed away, and she passed away on August the 4th. So we thought we were going to have to come home, but they decided to uh, have her celebration of life this Friday. And, and so that everybody, or actually they had a trip planned with their son that they were hoping to go on. Things took a turn for the worse and, and then she passed and they thought, you know what, we need to go with our son and do his bicycle camp in Whistler, BC. So we managed to stop and on our way back in Whistler and spend an overnight with them and give them hugs and love and support. We bought them a lovely dinner in the town of Whistler in the the village, I should say, of Whistler. And yeah, I mean, it's it's going to be a really difficult uh, celebration of life to go to on Friday. But near the end there, she was she lost her, her voice and she couldn't hold her head up. And yeah, it was it was really sad. So she's planned that during the time she knew she was going to pass. So She's planned her entire celebration. I guess she wants a large, um, a large celebration with lots of people there. She wanted blue and white as the colors. And after the celebration, there is a dinner. But between the dinner and the celebration of life, there is a bike ride. And so people are encouraged to bring their bicycles. And we're going to do a little bike ride. And that's for her brother because her brother's an avid cyclist. So we're going to all cycle down through Fish Creek Park. And so that's kind of, kind of um, a neat thing. But she's 12 years old. And if you ever want to know about her and her story and how she's advocating for childhood cancer, because her big thing is 4%, she always says that there's only 4% of the funding that goes to childhood cancer. So she's kind of passed the baton on to her parents to say, uh, continue my legacy and fight for more than 4% of the cancer funding. So anyway, so that's Friday. And so we got back from our trip on Saturday and I kind of pushed to get back because um, my friends Scylla and Marsha from the Twitch and Stitch podcast were in town, so I wanted to meet up with them. So I offered them a bed. So they came Saturday, and um, uh, we had a nice dinner here, and we invited um, her name. She's Creative Mojo Podcast. She's Auntie Joe 12 I think, on Instagram, and she was here. I invited her over for dinner, and the, all of us sat in the living room and knit, and then we had dinner together. And so that was fun. And um, Marsha gifted me. She'd been to up to Edmonton to see the grocery girls. And she'd seen uh, Fawn Knits. And she'd seen Jenny from Lone Larch Podcast. And then she went to Custom Woolen Mills. And look what she gifted me. She brought me this as a little thank you or whatever. Or it's just a... We, we knitters tend to do that. We like to give little gifts, but this is from Custom Woolen Mills, and look at the colors in that. That is spectacular, and she was thinking, and we talked about it, we, maybe I'll do a, a cowl, or maybe mittens, and a, I don't know, but anyway, it's gonna be lovely. It's squishy, it's lovely, it's got an alpaca in it. I don't think I've ever knit with alpaca before, so it's lovely, so that I got from Marsha. And then the next day after they slept over, she was here with her sister, Scylla, and Marsha, and her two daughters, Allie and Aurora. And we all made our way down to two of uh, yarn shops here in Calgary. 
She'd already been to Stash and she'd been to Gina Brown's and Pudding. And I think she did that with Can Candice, uh, who is transitory and she does Pin Feathers and Pearls podcast. She did some shopping with her uh, on the Saturday. And then on the Sunday, we went to the Knitting Room at the Brentwood Mall here in Calgary. And uh, Scylla bought a bunch of yarn there. And then we went on, oh, and I bought them each some sock yarn there from Prairie Dye Studio. I, gave, I gifted them uh, two skeins of your yarn that I bought at the knitting room. She's got lovely stuff. And then we went to The Loop, my favorite yarn shop. Well, I like them all, but it's I call it my favorite because it's really close. And sadly, it's on my way home from work. <laughs> so I couldn't resist. And I bought two skeins of this. It's called Allegria or Allegria. I'm not sure how you say it, but I bought two of them. And look at the colors in that. Isn't that just lovely and squishy and yummy? And it's sock yarn. And I, I'm thinking a shawl. And while we were there, Marcia said, you should make the schmancy. So she gifted me, she sent me on Ravelry her pattern, which is called the Schmancy Shawl, and I'll insert a picture of that here. So that's her shawl. I'm not sure whether I'll do that or whether I'll end up making socks with it, but I just couldn't leave it in the store because, my goodness, look at that. That's beautiful. Anyway, so I do believe that is the last of the fix or my acquisition. So that's that. So I'm gonna share a few little things about my trip. Uh, one, I just wanna share one story. Just the night before we came home, we came through Banff, and then instead of going home, uh, we decided to go north through um, Saskatchewan River Crossing. I think the highway might be 93, but I'm not sure. Anyway, from Banff, you can take a, a road north, and you go up and you turn at the Saskatchewan River Crossing, and we were there and we bought our uh, makings for dinner. We bought um, Smokies and six Smokies, six buns, and a, a small container of chocolate milk. And it came to like $21. <laughs> so um, we also slipped into the pub and had a beer, just one beer. And then we jumped back in our van and carried on uh, east through um, Nordeg, and then we ended up in a beautiful little campsite at Crimson Lake, which was lovely. But we rolled into there after dark. So we have to, we haven't eaten dinner, we've had a beer, we haven't eaten dinner, and we go to set up camp, and it's pitch black. I mean, it couldn't, I mean, the stars were shining, and we had a full moon that was absolutely spectacular, but we couldn't see, I couldn't put, see my my hand right here in, in front of my face. So, but I, and I had to pee really bad. So I'm helping my husband. We're getting things set up and I'm, I don't know where the bathrooms are. So we're busy getting the camp uh, set up <laughs> and he is busy making, um, first of all, we're trying to get the lamp or lantern. So he opens up the back of the van and the lantern slides out and smashes. I mean, it has a, it's one of those Coleman lanterns and it's got a glass kind of a, um, kind of a, I don't know what you call it, but it's the part, this part here is all glass and it just shattered into a million pieces. But we have a flashlight as well and he gets the flashlight and we have another lantern that our friends gave us that take that white, the white gas that, you know, the old pump, Coleman pumps, uh, stoves, it takes that kind of fuel too, but it has to be assembled. So here's Tim with that flashlight in his mouth, looking down, trying to, and the flashlight goes out. And I'm wiggling my knees. I really have to pee badly. <laughs> so he's busy getting that all set up. And uh, in the meantime, he's trying to get a fire started too. So we get the lamp finally set up. Um, no, we didn't get quite good. We get the fire started first. So we got, we're getting the fire started. And it's going, and I'm still, I really have to pee badly. So we're getting it started, and we can't get it started because the wood has been wet. It's a little bit rainy, and we got the kindling going, and it, and he threw, used a little bit of the white gas to start it. In the, and it started, but it, the, it was just too wet. So he started taking paper towel 
and he decided, I'm going to do something here. And he covered these paper towel balls with white gas. And I said, Tim, I have to pee. So I go around to the bush, which is beside our campsite. It's in the provincial park. And I'm squatting to pee because I don't know where the, the bathrooms are. And the flashlight's not working. And the lantern's not working yet. So I'm squatting. I says, whatever you do, you know, don't watch or whatever. I'm going to go in behind the van here into the bush here and pee. And as I'm doing that, he takes one of these fireballs and throws it into the fire and poof, makes, I mean, our campsite is like lit up like a Boeing 747. And here I am, ass out, peeing in the bush. <laughs> Nothing makes you stop more than that. And I'm pulling up my pants and, and I'm screaming at my ass for, for starting this, making this huge light. Anyway, so that's my story. I got caught with my pants down with a with our campsite lit up like a, you know, like a huge ball of fire. But anyway, so yes, we finally got this, the, the fire going. We got our second lantern going and we ate our $20 smokies <laughs> over the fire. But it was a beautiful campsite. And the next day we took Tucker to the lake and he loves to swim. So we threw the stick in and we, it's, uh, we're going to have to go back there because we only spent an overnight there in the dark. And I'd like to go back there because it's really only about two and a half hours from Calgary. And it's a beautiful provincial campground. So we'll have to go there. And the reason we went that direction is to visit Tim's mom in um, Red Deer. She's been in the hospital for some time now. And we just wanted to visit her before we went home. So that's what we did. My mom's doing well. And uh, we had a family dinner the other night. And she came with dad. And yeah, it was good to see her. And... Yeah, it's been a really great month. And at the end here, I'm gonna throw in some pictures and uh, maybe a little video clip or something of my crazy dog or something. I'm not sure what I'll put at the back end here, but I just wanted to get this done and finished and out. And thank you for being patient with me and thanks for watching. And we'll see you soon. Take care, bye-bye. <laughs>